Recording Daily Sales Summaries in QuickBooks. My name is Michelle Long and I'm a CPA with an MBA in Entrepreneurship. I'm the owner of Long for Success and I'm thrilled to be an international trainer for Intuit. I've really enjoyed the privilege of traveling around the world helping accountants and bookkeepers to learn more about QuickBooks and I'm glad that you're joining me today to learn more about using a daily sales summary in QuickBooks. Keep in mind that this daily sales summary is great for some of those clients that might be using a cash register or a point of sale system that does not integrate with QuickBooks. For example, maybe beauty salons, restaurants, retail and e-commerce or others. Again, people that are using a cash register or a point of sale system that does not integrate with QuickBooks. It's really great for those clients because you need to be able to get the sales entered into QuickBooks. So what you'll probably do, let's say they're using a cash register, is you'll get the Z tape totals. At the end of the day, they Z out the register. You get the totals from that Z tape and we're going to enter those into a sales receipt in QuickBooks to record the daily sales summary. So a few key points before I go into QuickBooks and show you how, how this could be set up and how you can do it is you're going to need to consider if you need to set up some additional accounts. You know, what might you need additionally that you don't have already? You'll want to set those accounts up. Then you'll also want to set up service items. Now, I'm going to give you an example here, but you really need to talk to your client, analyze how they're doing their operations and how they work to really know what service items need to be set up. For example, on sales, you know, we're going to do an example here for a beauty salon. So you'd want to talk to the client to see, you know, do you want to set up items for haircuts and perms and color, or do you just want to set up, you know, salon services, you know, so you want to find out what level of detail they want to track, consider what totals are you able to get from the Z tape, and then what totals do you want to track in QuickBooks. You'll want to talk to them about that. You might also want to see on um, the tips, you'll need to account for the tips that are received, as well as you need to track the tips that have been paid out to the employees, and if there's any additional tips that you need to pay the employees on their paycheck. One thing to keep in mind is that the IRS now says that all tips need to be accounted for and reported on the employee's paycheck as income and have payroll deductions taken out for that. Um, so keep that in mind and you'll want to talk to the client about how they handle their tips, you know, especially when it comes to the credit card tips. Some, some companies will, you know, have enough cash on hand that they may pay out all tips, cash and credit card tips, every day to their employees or to the stylist for a beauty salon. Some other salons may have a situation where the, the employees get to keep the cash tips every day, but the credit card tips, you'll want to post those to a liability account, and then those might be an addition on their paycheck. So you just want to find out how the client is actually handling tips and processing them, but keep in mind that all of the tips are supposed to be reported as income on their paychecks. Now, they may not all be in addition to their paycheck if they already took those tips, um, as if the tips were already paid out in cash. So that's where you got to just determine how the client is operating. Um, also then on the sales taxes, you're going to enter the total from the Z tape and then we'll need to post the sales taxes that were collected to a liability account. You're not going to be using the sales tax feature in QuickBooks because the, you want to take the taxes that were calculated from the system and enter that total. You'll also need to set up service items for all the payments that were received. For example, you might set up service items for cash and checks, Visa, MasterCard, you may need one for Amex, um, but what are all the payment methods? Also, I always recommend setting up an over and short service item and I usually map that to an expense account because most of the time it seems like they come up short instead of over. Then you may need some other service items as well. Maybe you need to set up and track gift certificates that are sold and redeemed. You know, we also mentioned that on the tips you may need to set up an employee liability account um, for credit card tips that have not been paid out yet. So again, you need to determine what do you need for that particular client. One other thing to keep in mind is that once we entered all these items into the sales receipt, it will net out to zero. Let's go ahead and look in QuickBooks how this might look. 
So in QuickBooks, I'm in the chart of accounts now, and you may again need to add some accounts here. So you can see here we have a tips clearing account that we may set up as a bank account. You may have a liability account down here for employee tips payable. Um, that might be uh, tips that have not been paid out yet, and I clicked on it and went into the register there. Um, but you may set that up. But again, these would be credit cards tips that were received that you might need to add as an addition onto their paycheck. So set up all the accounts that you need, then go to your products or services list and set up all the uh, uh, service items that you need here. Uh, for example, like tips that were out in cash, tips received, employee tips payable. Um, then you may also have, let me go back into the products and services list, all of these service items and various items here for the payments that were received like Amex, cash and checks received. We've got a MasterCard and a Visa on here. Set up an over and short account or service item as well. So set up all the items that you're going to need. Then we'll go into that sales receipt. And I set up a customer called Daily Sales. That way I find it in the customer center and I can see all that. Now, one thing to keep in mind, because you do have to track the tip income for each stylist in this example, or it might be each server if you're in a restaurant, you might want to put in here a Daily Sales receipt for each stylist so you can track tips by stylist. The on the other hand, the company or the client may have another method for their people to report their tip income um, to make sure that they get it reported for payroll purposes. So you'll want to talk to them about how they're doing it and try to help them to make sure that they're complying with the rules and trying to make sure that they have the tip income needed for the payroll purposes. Now down here under your items, I've just got something set up here for haircuts and we'll enter our total for all the haircuts. We've got a line item here for retail products. Here's the total tips that were received for the day. Here's the sales tax that we collected. So the first few items here are all the money coming in, things that we you know, sold and that we collected in the way of tips and sales taxes. This is all the money that we should have and we need to account for for the day. Then we enter negative numbers for the payments that were received, like cash and check payments here. We got some Visa payments, MasterCard payments. You may have some other things on here as well. Um, again, you might have gift cards sold or redeemed might be on here. Here in this example, we had cash over and short of $1.40. And then we also went ahead and paid out all the tips in cash. So we've got a negative 620 for the tips that were paid out um, to the employees. Now, entering this sales receipt, these amounts are going to vary all the time. So every day you're going to have different totals here, but your service items are probably going to be the same almost every single day. So a tip that will save either you or your clients a lot of time on entering these things is to set it up as a recurring template. So for example, after you've you know, set this up, go ahead and click on make recurring at the bottom of that sales receipt. Oh, one more thing, make sure that remember it totals to zero because you account for all the money that was collected or should have been collected minus all the money that you actually had um, and it should net out to zero. Okay, so make sure you've got that. But we want to make it recurring template. So I usually do it as an unscheduled template. Um, and then you come down here and I would zero all these amounts out so that it will save your product or service items. It saves all your items for you with a zero amount so then you or your clients can just go off that Z tape and enter the totals in here. So let's see where you would find that recurring transaction template. You click on the gear in the upper right corner and you click on recurring transactions. And that will bring up a list of all of your recurring transactions. Here you'll see I've got one that I saved previously called Daily Sales with Tips. It was an unscheduled one. So every day when I'm ready to use it, I would just simply click here where it says Use. And you'll see that I've got this where I've got all these items saved, but all of my rates are zero. So I would just go through from my Z-tape totals, drop the totals in here, and it's going to save a lot of time. So again, make sure you talk to your client about how they're accounting for things. Make sure you understand their process and everything. Set up the accounts that you need. Set up the service items that you need. Then create a sales receipt template 
and that's going to help save you a lot of time to get these daily sales entered into QuickBooks.